Welcome to Stroke Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion that comes to us from trusty William Blake. Um, now, this is for the poem, And Did Those Feet in Ancient Time. But I'm not going to simply present the poem. Uh, rather, I am going to present the poem in the context that the artist had intended it. Now, while and whereas I have seen this poem presented on its own, and I think that's a valid way of doing things, right? <clears throat> I want to do this this way for a reason. Oftentimes, on this channel, I have made much to do about William Blake being sort of a crazy guy. A little bit out there, wild, uh, someone who would be looked at today probably as... Um, a religious extremist, if not just the weird guy down the road. So, like, bottom level, if William Blake were around today, you wouldn't talk to him, okay? Top level, William Blake is around today, the news is trying to talk to him. <clears throat> I've often made that case. That's what I'm saying. I've often made that case on the channel that William Blake is sort of a crazy guy. That might not have been fair. I've never, before today, prior to today, read this bit. I've read the poem, never read this bit of William Blake. To have said William Blake might be sort of a crazy guy, not fair. Probably I was underestimating. So, in a section called Milton, a poem in two books, the author and printer, W. Blake, 1804, to justify the ways of God to men. Not boys to men. Very different. Preface. Preface. The stolen and perverted writings of Homer and Ovid, of Plato and Cicero, which all men ought to contemn, are set up by artifice against the sublime of the Bible. But when the new age is at leisure to pronounce, all will be set right, and those grand works of more ancient and consciously ancient and consciously and professedly inspired men will hold their proper rank, and the daughters of memory shall become the daughters of inspiration. Shakespeare and Milton were both curbed by the general malady and infection from the silly Greek and Latin slaves of the sword. Rouse up, O young men of the new age, set your foreheads against the ignorant hirelings, for we have hirelings in the camp, the court, and the university, who would, if they could, forever depress mental and prolong corporeal war. Painters, on you I call, sculptors, architects, suffer not the fashionable fools to depress your powers by the prices they pretend to give for contemptible works of the expensive advertising boasts that they make of such works. Believe Christ and his apostles that there is a class of men whose work delight is in destroying we do not want either Greek or Roman models if we are but just and true to our own imaginations. Those worlds of eternity in which we shall live forever in Jesus our Lord. And did, these, and did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand. So we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Would to God that all the Lord's, the Lord's people were prophets. 
Say what you will about a fervent dedication to religion on one side or the other. There is no denying that that was impassioned. There is no denying that that was intense. So intense, in fact, so intense, in fact, was this poem, especially bookended by the preface and ended with, would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets, that I think, once again, Milton might, or Milton, <clears throat> Blake might have snuck something past us. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon earth's mountain green, and was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth from our clouded hills? Did you catch that? And did the countenance divine shine forth from our clouded hills? That's the first question here. That opening stanza is not a question, it's a statement. And did those feet in ancient times, and those feet did in ancient time, walk upon England's mountains green, and was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen? That's a statement. It is ended with an exclamation point. <laughs> It is not a question. Um, what we have here is Blake saying, this thing is true. Those feet in ancient time, they were here. They were real in this land. This is important for our speaker, it seems, because what our speaker is calling for is nothing short of a spiritual revolution. Not a spiritual coming of age. Not a spiritual awakening. A spiritual revolution. I am calling on the painters. I am calling on the this. I am calling on the that. I'll be right back. Give me one second here. <clears throat> Here is what that sounds like. Sorry, let me find the right page. I should have been prepared. Da, 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 da. Okay, I've ruined everything now. All oh, the pressure's on. <clears throat> Here. Rouse up, O young men of the new age. Set your foreheads against the ignorant hirelings, for we have hirelings in the camp, the court, and the university who, ha who would, if they could, forever depress mental and prolonged corporeal war. Painters, on you I call, sculptors, architects, suffer not the fashionable fools to depress your powers by the price they pretend to give for contemptible works or the expensive advertising boasts that they make of such works. <clears throat> artists rise up your work is necessary and it is necessary only insofar as it pertains to the spiritual revolution a specter is haunting Europe the specter of communism all the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exercise this specter Pope and Tsar Metternich and Guinot, French radicals and German police spies. Where is the party in opposition that has not been decried as communistic by its opponents in power? Where is the opposition that has not hurled back the branding reproach of communism against the more advanced opposition parties, as well as against its reactionary adversaries? There is a specter haunting the world of Blake, the specter of um, spiritual impurity. And that is further explicated 
in the poem itself. And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold, bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O clouds unfold, bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand, till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. There is in here a great dichotomy betwixt light and darkness, between light and darkness as well as seen and unseen. Did those feet in ancient times walk upon the mountains, England's mountains green, and the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? Clouded, can't see well. Among these dark satanic mills, dark, can't see well. Bring me my bow of burning gold, light comes from fire. And bring my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand. Sleep. Got no, no way to see in your sleep. Um, along with this, There is a, an idea put forth of something like splendid nature versus wretched man-made. Um, England's mountain green and the pleasant pastures, right? Those things which are explicated in that opening stanza to be known as beautiful. These things are natural they are seen, they are beautiful. You contrast that with um, our clouded hills. Uh, this taking place during the Industrial Revolution makes the idea of cloud, pun intended here, hazy. Is this a natural cloud, a white cloud, a rain cloud, a snow cloud, a storm cloud? Or is it a cloud from a factory? We seem to have an answer later in that same stanza among these dark satanic mills. These do not seem to be natural clouds. Instead, they are man-made clouds. Um, in the opening spiel there, that little preface, the Stolen and Perverted Writings of Homer and Ovid, of Plato and Cicero. This seems to get to something deeper for Blake. This idea of spontaneous, natural, and pure versus contrived, man-made, and dirty. Those, those writings of Homer and Ovid, of Plato and Cicero, have been stolen and perverted. Much in the same way that God's green earth has been stolen and perverted by the mills. By the man-made stuff. There is, it seems, at least here, much to do about that which is contrived. So even the artists that Blake is calling to, to stand up, their art is being called upon to further 
the word and ideas of God. Might sections of the Bible be contrived? No, 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 no. Mustn't be. They're not. They can't be. These are pure, unadulterated. These were crafted from the mind of God himself. And it's a strange sort of circular reasoning here. The moment one allows for contriving in the Bible, contriving in religion, this whole sort of, uh, this whole bit is undercut. The minute one um, is able to admit that some type of human contrived blend of materials would be better suited for that London winter than just the fleece off a sheep's back, maybe this whole argument is undercut. But it can't be. It can't be because um, the natural is good, the spontaneous is good, and God is good. Everything else undercuts that it self. So that opening stanza about the fact that, yeah, God was here. God saw this place. God walked here. God was scurrying amongst us. Must have been. All of this natural, all of this light, all of this beauty. Rear-ended. And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Like I opened this video with, a lot of times when I talk about William Blake, I can't help but jab, right? Just because of my own sentiments. But I do wonder, I do wonder when speaking about the artist, would William Blake be recognized today? Would he be recognized for his art today? It is admittedly contemptuous to suggest that William Blake would be the weird guy in the corner apartment who never had a poem published, but when he died and they found out by the smell, they went into his apartment and it was like Seven, the movie Seven, all over. Be contemptuous to suggest that. It's not what I'm saying. But in today's world, where even artistic integrity seems to lack integrity. Would this ultimate adherence to the principles and values that William Blake had set up around him lead to acceptance in a social circle and all of these things, publishing, um, online spheres, all of these things are social circles. Would this lead to his, would, would this adherence to strict moral codes, to strict ideological arguments, would this lead to him being banished? Not because of skill, and, and you know, 
I'm not a huge fan of his poetry. I'm not a huge fan of his artwork. But when you contrast the two and put them together, I think there's something interesting to look at there, interesting to play with there. But in a world that seems so convinced, everyone has to play by the same rules. Everyone has to have the same guidelines. Everyone has to accept the same things. Would this lead to William Blake's ultimate downfall? Would this have stopped William Blake from being recognized in today's world? Um, there's a really interesting question from Elon Musk, who talks about the interviewing process and the hiring process and all of these things. And he says one of the things that keeps him up at night sometimes is wondering if Nikola Tesla applied to Tesla Motors, would we hire him? And he says that he, he oftentimes is, a, Elon Musk says oftentimes he is afraid that the answer would be no. This is to me a similar question. If William Blake existed today, would we, as an artistic community, as a literature community, as a reading community, as a community of writers, accept him? I think maybe no. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, it really helps me out here on the channel if you hit that like button. Uh, hitting the subscribe button if you were here by chance but not design might be a pretty good idea. And I hope to have you back for the next poetry discussion, poetry review, short story discussion, short story review, novel read along, whatever it is that I'm doing here on the channel.